You're still watching Plus Politics. Now, 10,269 electoral officers will participate in the June 18 governorship elections in Akiti State. This was stated by the uh, resident electoral commissioner, Dr. Adenio Teller in Adoekiti, during a roadshow to sensitize residents to the need to vote and be peaceful in the forthcoming poll. Teller said electoral officers who comprised INEC staff corps members and some youths were undergoing a series of training ahead of the polls. According to him, the preparation for the election is picking up momentum and a lot of activities have been carried out and almost completed. In the area of security, uh, he said the electoral body would work with the police and other security agencies to ensure a hitch-free election. Joining us now to discuss this uh, is Dr. Adeniro Teller. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Adeniro, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Great. Uh, let's start by talking about um, the improved um, INEC. Of course, um, many people have talked about the beavers um, and a number of state being a litmus test for uh, the upcoming elections in, a, in a Kitty State and Oshun State. Now, there are obviously concerns because we saw some hiccups. Uh, I was also in Anambra uh, during that election and we saw that some beavers were not working. Um, some of the core members were unable to use those beavers. But let's generally look at the readiness of INEC for Ekiti. Okay, thank you very much. The commission is poised and we are fully determined to conduct a kit election in an improved electoral process. And this could even be seen in many diverse ways in respect of the step we have taken so far. For instance, in the aspect of electoral personnel, the security issues, the materials, and etc. All right, let's talk about um, the issues that um, we have seen. Um, political parties have continuously been dragging um, each other to court, saying that this is not the rightful candidate. But of course, INEC's duty is to um, take whoever the leadership of the party says is the candidate or the flag bearer for the party. Um, has INEC been able to make sure that all the areas where um, these polling centers, including the new ones, the polling units that have been um, added to the ones that were there, uh, will be fully secured. Now, we already know that normally we have police officers who are not armed at these polling units. But generally, can you say that Akiti State will be safe, secure, and we will not have any electoral hiccups come that day? Looking at the state of affairs right now within the state. Thank you very much. The, I, from the commission aspect, in a recent time, the commission has succeeded in bringing up an idea, a program that is specifically meant for the election violence and mitigation advocacy tools. And the whole idea is to identify early signal and relate this to, relevant, to the relevant stakeholders and the security personnel in an attempt to devise an appropriate mitigations to curb electoral violence. Secondly, about two weeks ago, the commission embarked on a program which is being anchored by the Electoral Institute. And this is being taken by the security operatives cascaded in the electoral security training. And the, 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 the workshops was basically on how to mitigate, proactively mitigate against violence as well. What's the biggest challenge that INEC um, is facing right now, or would you would think would be the biggest challenge for you in the uh, equity elections uh, come next month? Do you have any other challenges aside from the hiccups that technology might pose? Again, um, the transmission of results is a thing that Nigerians are really holding on to uh, for dear life, being that this would be one of the guarantees for free, fair, and credible elections. Um, how certain are you that these beavers will work even in some areas where might not be ado necessarily a doekiti? You could recollect that we had an election in FCT February 2022, and in 2021 we had election in Anambra respectively. And I was fortunate to participate in the two elections. I can only tell you that from what we learned so far, we are engaging and we have done that even here in Nikiti engaging the core members. We have invested them 
and engaging them in a root training, which is we, we, we call it root training, and it's an intensive training that spanned for a period of five weeks instead of three days before the election. So they could even handle the beavers in an appropriate manner. There are some certain hindrances that we pose with the use of beavers. But as I speak to you, we are able to, to summon the courage and, and have the challenges over. So we never have said any problem as it is now. Let's look at the issue of INEC um, officials, whether it be the ad hoc staff or the main staff. Um, many have also queried um, the steadfastness of INEC officials. We've also seen INEC officials being, um, you know, charged to court on election, um, you know, malpractices. Uh, is there also some form no. of pro just hold on? Um, is there some form of training also and retraining on electoral malpractices um, by standing and watching? I know that there's a big issue with, um, you know, vote buying at polling units, even though INEC has said that this is out of their hands. But is there any form of um, upgrade that the INEC has come up with to help with the issue of vote buying and electoral malpractices? On the issue of the, the electoral officials, you will discover that the newly introduced devices being put in place by the commission will not give a room for such practice to take place. Then besides, we have given enough training to our staffs, and we are not even giving to the whole world that they will be satisfactorily working assiduously towards achieving the set goals by giving a credible election to the, to the electorate. On this issue of vote buying, we have embarked on a series of training and enlightenment to the electorate to know that they cannot even say themselves, they have to choose freely who will determine, who will occupy the seat for the next four years. How well do you think that that training, I mean, I saw that you did a road show to try to educate the populace on uh, what should happen during the elections, but... Uh, I also covered the Anambra elections, and I saw a lot of vote buying happening with, across the different political parties. Some came in form of food, some came in form of snacks, some actually gave food and money, um, inducing people who were on that line, um, to, you know, to vote for the different political parties. Again, how do we dissuade that? I, I, I'm asking because the road shows are great, the sensitization campaigns are good, but. How effective are they in changing the mindsets of the average Nigerian? We're in 2022, and 2023 is just around the corner where we're going to have the general elections. How effective do you think all that you've done is? The Rosh show is of two ways. The first intent about this is for the electorate to pick up the permanent voters' card that we are succeeded in distributing to the 16 local governments. The second aspect is for them to come out in mass and vote, such that their vote will count and they choose their candidate rightfully. So you're saying that this is very effective or not? You're just saying, you've just told me what you do, but do you think that what you've done so far is going to be effective? It would reflect in the attitude of the voters when they come out on that day to vote. That's, that was my question. Definitely, because virtually every day they pick their voters' card. We normally even give the details of the number of those who have collected the PVC. That is an assurance in a way. So, that so there is sorry, no way has there been an improvement? And so, their vote is going to be count. Then I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, Mr. Teller. Has they, there they, been they, an the, improvement? The training, the training given to the core members, the training given to the electoral officials, the poll officials, and all that. We normally roll the numbers out on constant basis. So that there won't be any error of, any error of doubting as guard exercise that we so, are even embarking So can upon. you say that there has been a... And we have created 5% markup contingency sorry, for the I'm total so, number I'm so of sorry to speak over you, Mr. Teller, but I'm going to ask this question again. Can you tell me if there has been uh, an improvement in the number of people who are picking up their voters card compared to the, the, the previous elections that you've had? Definitely. We, we, the reason why we have an augment, increment on the number of people that are putting their full one voters card is as a result of the step being taken by the commission. For instance, we engage the, C, the civil society organization, the faith-based organization, the market women outreach, and the, the, the elderly ones in, the, in, the, in our respective villages who are really involved to know the importance. And they should know that the permanent voters card is so central 
to this exercise without being collecting it they cannot even pick their candidates rightfully well, I want to say thank you, uh, Dr. Adeniro Teller is the resident electoral commissioner for Ekiti State, and he's speaking to us live from Ado Ekiti. Thank you so much for speaking with us, Dr. Teller. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Well, thank you all for staying with us to round up the show tonight. Residents of Kanu State tell us what transpired in Kanu as regards the explosion that took place last week. The gas explosion, or was it a bomb blast? Now that's on Street Views. I'm Mary Ann O'Connor. I'll see you tomorrow on Plus Politics at 7 p.m. as we talk for development. Have a great night. Actually, I'm a teacher in a school. So after our assembly in the morning, I was in the class teaching, and all of a sudden we hear a sound. And by reaching here, we saw the whole thing that happened today. But the painful thing is that the government are telling us that it is gas. Why the evidence of the whole thing is showing here is showing that it's a bomb blast. So I don't know why the government will be lying to us. Anyone where they talk to a gas, not lie, not be gas. Let the government tell us the truth. Let the, let the, let the government say the truth. Yeah? But if they don't say the truth, God will tell will say the truth. Say everywhere now. Now after the gas, if you go up to the new road, it blow it, it move one 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 building house. If you go to that place for it's a road, it one new building, it blow all the glasses. He killed my brother. Two of my brother here. Yeah? Come and come here. Come and tell us now. Now gas. No big gas. Now bomb. A bomb. It's bomb blasters. This one is not the gas. It's bomb blasters. Like play, just play Kano State government. Uma helpless. Now ma, I'm talking that like, um, Uma be body parts inside this place. Please, we are begging Kano State government. Uma helpless. Please. Some say this bomb blast that is uh, the good that they are carrying bomb for body. But it's only God knows what happened exactly. It's a bomb explosion. It's a bomb explosion yesterday. So I just thought I was talking about it. So don't tell me what I am.